I'll tell you what the biggest con about working New Year's Eve is. Double time pay, where you don't get it. But everyone that comes in on New Year's Day gets double time pay. So you can work New Year's Eve and you get nothing extra. Work New Year's Day and you get double time. That's the biggest con, I think, if they change that, people like it. But yeah, so you come in on a night shift and it, it, it's a tangible feeling. It's in the air. It's like you can... You can smell the kickoff that's about to happen. There's nothing going on at night and it's really, really quiet. There's, there's hardly anything on the radio, there's no beeping, there's hardly any jobs on the box. It's just absolutely like, how can I put it, like a ghost town. And we know that as soon as it gets to five to midnight, you, wherever you go, you can go and sit anywhere in your car and you know you're going to come across trouble. You can go sit on Moors in the middle of nowhere. And then literally as soon as it goes midnight, ACR will say, uh, Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome to 2021 or whatever it is. And then instantly all the jobs come out. We've got a car on its roof. We've got a drunk driver. We've got a stabbing. We've got a fight. And it'll just say anyone for this, anyone for that, anyone for a domestic. And it's just job after job after job coming out. Wherever you park, like I said, you could park at Miller Moors and then all of a sudden you'll have a dickhead come right in front of you, start giving you a finger and wanting to fight you. Wherever you are, you'll drop on that one idiot that can't handle his beer. And I don't know what it is. It's it's like when there's a full moon out. These people that go out. Are, uh, <laughs> just imagine them like ripping out of their clothes. It is. It's just like you, you go anywhere. You can literally go to the moon and you'll sit on the moon in fucking middle of nowhere looking at Earth like 600 million miles away. And all and you're like, this, oi, oi, fucking wanker, piggy bastards. And you're like, where have you come from? Why me? Why, why this? But then you get told not to lock up because cells are full. And the only cell that might be open then is like Harrogate, which is 25 miles away, or Manchester, because everywhere in West Yorkshire is absolutely full to brim and they won't let anybody else in. They'll just literally kick them out. Um, so you get told, unless it's a stabbing or a murder, you don't lock anybody up. Obviously, different to drunk drivers, because you can obviously deal with them there and then. What actually happens if the cells are full? Then where, where do you go? What, do you, you go, have to prioritise people? Well, on the pace, you go to the next available cell. But if Bradford's full, Pudsey's full, Wakefield's full, Normanton's full, everywhere's full, because the cells can only hold, just say, for instance, 30 or 40 people. When there's, I mean, years ago, when I was younger in service, we used to double cells up. So you say, oh, he's in there for a shoplift, or he's in there for a warrant, throw two warrants in there. Um, so we don't really do that anymore. So they'd say next to, so you'd be ringing North Yorkshire. You'd have to ring South Yorkshire. And if there were nowhere to get anybody in, that's when it come out saying, just what are you going to do? with You go to a fight, two people have busted each other's nose, kicked out of each other. Right, you're locked up. Well, what are you going to do with them? You can't take them anywhere. There's nowhere for them to take them. So a lot of times you'd have to disperse the job, um, delay it for the next morning and say, right, jog on on your way. Um, it were only unless it was something so violent that you'd have to deal with it there and then. And obviously they'd try and make room itself, either kick someone out or alternate the people that are in and that sort of thing. If you were a locked up for something really petty, like a petty theft or something, right? And then the cells fill up. Could you get lucky and end up getting released? You probably could do, yeah, but the idea being is they'd probably just report you for the offence. They'd probably just turn around and say, rather than interview you or whatever, or you bailed to come back on this day, you bailed to come back two days later, or you reported for the offence. We're not gonna we're not gonna interview you now because we interview for best evidence. But if you've got someone there for a, a murder and he's got a knife and he's covered in blood and you've got someone for a two piece shoplift at Morrison's Obviously, this person and the pace is going to take priority, but there's only so many there's only so many cells, and this is why I think things need to be changed as well because it needs to be an infrastructure that's it's there for New Year's Eve, the party and the the fights, the the injuries, and the, the bobbies bobbies are going out and getting kicked, getting their heads kicked in, all because people can't drink. New Year's Eve in Middle Keithley, I've locked a, a man up, six foot banana. Um, he was jumping on my car bonnet, so I locked him up. Uh, again, just too much beer. I've dealt with. Two people fighting outside living rooms in Keefley and chased a, a Skeletor He-Man and a Power Ranger down the road. Uh, that was bizarre, is that? Because I couldn't decide if He-Man's hair were real or it were a proper wig. Um, <laughs> and I've had a fight with SpongeBob SquarePants outside the park pub on Manningham Lane about seven or eight years ago. And again, just alcohol fueled. It's a thing where if I, I think last time I, I'm 45 year old, year old, year old, year old. And I think the last time I went out on a New Year's Eve, I was 24 or 25. And I just couldn't do with the ass of going into a bar, being four deep, getting a pint, and literally it, it taking two hours to get a pint. There's no way to sit. Everyone's banging to you. Someone's going to start a fight. Taxis are 25 quid extra. I just, I just can't sit a point where we used to have house parties after that. 
And then the more memorable stuff in in the police at the time, New Year's Eve, is either cars on the roofs dealing with collisions or fails or having to take children off people. And I just think it's that time when it's meant to be all good and happy. And there's so many people taint this thing, um, this one night a year when it's like, well, I suppose, when football, I fucking hate football. When football matches play, a big football matches, it just gives people an excuse to go off their heads. So that's basically New Year. And then when you're leaving at seven, half past six, seven o'clock on New Year's Day morning and early team are coming in, you're just thinking, Frank, fuck, I don't have to deal with any of this shit that's down in itself. Because like you said, you've still got all the, oh, we've come across a car with no one in it because they've been drunk the night before and you landed on this roof on building golf course or whatever and they've run off. So you've got to do all these investigations. Plus you might have four people in cells for drunk driving, one for a robbery. Or that. So yeah, that's your New Year's Eve for you. But please don't go out. Please stay at home. Don't drink. Um... Yeah, it's meant to be a peace time of year, so please think about what you're doing. Please switch yourselves on and please, and go, well, I'm going to say have a good time because I'll be having a good time. What will you be drinking? Rum. Oh, rum. if you ever want to give me a sponsor, sponsors people, spice rum. Mm, Kraken, Bumbo, uh, Red Leg, uh, Dead Man's Fingers. Send them all in. Email address will be at bottom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. New merch, new t shirt. 1965 calling number PTSD. There'll be a link to the store uh, on the video as well. And uh, it's just about getting the message out there for mental illness and be, not being afraid to be able to talk. So don't ever be afraid of who you are and have a happy, happy New Year's Eve.